Hello everyone, we have another live session here again uh, and I'm glad you joined us. If you're watching this on Truly Majestic, please subscribe to our ministry YouTube channel which is in the description of this video so we can have all the people in one place. Um, this is not the ministry YouTube channel it's only uh, there because we want to reach more people uh, at this particular time because we are being more and more oppressed so we need your support uh, thank you very much again for joining us uh, our rather piece of news I'm just gonna share that with you and pray against all these things that's happening in the world particularly in the politics world and, and you know we don't need to spell it all out because it's all there and everybody can see them some of some people obviously they are still blind and sleep they need to be waking up and it's part of uh, your job and my job to wake those people up archbishop of canterbury i'm, I'm just going to read it uh, excuse me for uh, not looking at the camera and reading this out from the the, the screen of my computer Archbishop of Canterbury tells churches don't get sucked in to supporting governments don't get sucked in to supporting governments uh, I'm quite to be honest uh, I'm quite surprised that he's actually said that so I read it because of the title and I thought you know I've never heard any anything this man says um, to stand on the basic basic principles of the Bible and uh, with his conduct and whatever he's done in the past it's just really it was it was a surprise to read that to, to, to say the least uh, I'm just gonna read pieces of this news I'm not gonna bore you churches must avoid being sucked in to supporting governments and stand up against oppression Archbishop of Canterbury declared on Sunday the reading on he says um, I'm not going to read everything I'm just going to pick um, things that are relevant but of course not out of context Suggesting this could seem to put them in conflict with governments, the Archbishop said, our approach springs from scripture. This is not the church getting involved in politics, it's the church getting involved in God. Too right. But why have you been quiet for so many late years, for so long? Uh, and then obviously applause broke out uh, and all that um, at the Canterbury meeting uh, and he said to be silent on the unethical treatment of migrants or on war oppression the abuse of human rights on persecution is to be one of the oppressors yes you are um, you are helping them if you're silent we live in solidarity because the person with the gun pointing at them and I have been there often cannot say anything that's right we virtually have guns pointed at pointing at us uh, government's guns the Archbishop has previously criticized Downing Street's plan to send illegal migrants to Rwanda, which is said went against Christian values. Speaking during the traditional Easter sermon, he said the policy raised serious ethical questions and cannot stand the judgment of God. We must speak and we must act and it goes on the report and then he says um, he said the churches needs to stand firm in its ability to help others and further down he said 
in history, in empire, in politics, all too often all churches, not only Anglicans, have gotten sucked in to supporting governments colluding with injustice and upholding oppression at any and every level. To stand against oppression is frightening because it is costly and so many of you know that so well. We don't like it when governments speak forcefully against us or do worse than that in many parts of the Anglican Communion, yet we must speak and we must act. Earlier this week, the Archbishop told the meeting that church members have disagreed without hatred in recent days, but not as many in the press want us to. And then uh, it goes on, the report goes on about uh, row over same-sex marriages. Uh, it came after he reaffirmed a 1998 Anglican declaration rejecting same-sex marriage sparking a controversy over the church's relationships with the LGBTQ and community. Sorry, LGBTQ plus. It just keeps going on the, the alphabet <laughs> community. I just said and instead. But I, I'm not. I'm not very familiar with these acronyms because I, I hate them, and I'm not even looking at them. How many? alphabet they keep adding to them I don't I don't really care it is against the Word of God and and we've spoken about it I've said about it in my last um, videos um, and I, I don't pull any punches and I'm, I'm just going straight to the point I don't have any boundaries as far as the Word of God is concerned so I say as it is and uh, I have suffered uh, for it but I don't stop there. So I, I, I say as it is. Uh, on Tuesday, the Archbishop said he could not and would not punish churches for conducting gay marriages. And why? Why would you not do that? You know, you don't need to punish them. You need to, yeah, educate them, um, put them in the right place, and. And yeah, if it if needs be, uh, punish them. And whatever it takes, you have the power. You've been given that power. You're not using it. He said, uh, "I neither have nor do I seek the authority to discipline or exclude a church of the Anglican Communion. I will not do so. Uh, I'm sure you do have, but let's suppose you don't have the the authority." Um, any church leader in this country, I've seen it myself, the church leaders, even in the little tiny churches with five, ten people, they have excluded people. So they, if they have the authority to do that, I'm sure you have. It just boils my blood when I read about these things. And, and you know, uh, as I said, this is shocking to me. And that's just an understatement to say I was shocked because he has been obviously he is a tool to say the least and he is just saying these things to wash his hands um, because of what the governments have in their in their plans you know in their agenda and he wants to say you know I have no authority it's not my fault it's the government's and uh, we have to stand firm and uh, speak out and act and why don't you actually say what act? If you're saying you can't do anything, what, what can you expect your members, your community to do? I'm here, folk, to tell you that you, even as a church member, have power. The, the power has been given to you by the, the word of God. The scripture is clear about that. It says if somebody sins, you have to take them aside and talk to them 
If they don't listen to you, take them to the church leader. If they don't talk to them, then they exclude them. And uh, since when just uh, sending migrants to Rwanda has become the major issue in the world? We have bigger issues in the world. Same-sex marriage is one of them that churches should have stood up against, against this atrocious uh, policy. As soon as they talked about gays, you should have stopped them. We are at fault. We as Christians. You know, there isn't enough zealous, passionate, God-loving Christians who are truly born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, but leading big communities who have the authority and power, who have the position to, to change the world. If there was only a handful of them, not well, maybe let, let's say a few hundred, a few hundred, there isn't a few hundred of zealous, passionate, Christ-like church leaders, and I'm talking about church, churches that have considerable number of uh, members even small churches we're not even talking about mega churches if you had only a few hundred let's even say a hundred we don't even have a hundred I'm afraid I don't think we have a hundred big church leaders who have passion for God and not not only talk about these things they go against it they bring about people and take people to the streets if, if need be take people uh, to do things a, a sort of civil uprising a sort of civil uh, disobedience uh, against these acts and policies and rules and laws that they they legislate one after another We have been silent, we have been complacent for far too long and for too many years. That is why we are where we are now. It's almost out of control. We can still rain, we can still <laughs> bring everything back in order in the world. If only and only if we have enough people zealous passionate christian word of god loving people who are born again and filled with the holy spirit who want to change the world back to normality this is not normal this is not normal and they keep telling you new normal new normal to to make sure that you understand this is not going to go back there is no going back as far as they're concerned. As far as I am concerned, I think and I believe, and I've said in my other videos, I believe those handful of gangsters who want to control the world, they want a big war. And they're trying, they've been trying their, their best to get a world war. And so far, they haven't managed, but they are really trying. It's not what you see on the news. It's not Russian. It's not China. It's not Russians attacking and wanting world war, threatening the world with nu nukes, or China. What Chinese and Russians are doing is only and only a reaction. You would do the same thing. Reaction to what you say, reaction to the Western policies and whatever they've done. Let's just say, for example, they've built up their nuclear facilities under the nose of Russia in Ukraine and other filthy bases, child trafficking bases. Yeah, uh, building biological uh, weaponry labs in Ukraine. Is it, is it direct threat to Russia? So why you do that and expect nothing in return? 
because you want a world war because with the world war and under the cover of that you can do all the all the other things all the other filthy things that you want to do legislate and uh, roll out bills and laws one after another without anybody saying anything or opposing without having any major opposition you'll have people like me talking but who am I I don't even have 10 people to dedicate themselves and follow me I, I don't I don't I'm not a I'm not a big influencer but I do what I am told to do what I feel compelled to do the rest is up to others to do the same we need to take action what is the action this archbishop is talking about he's not spelling it out but I tell you what you have to do you in your workplace in your home in your circle of friends and family you have to speak out and say this is wrong let's say same-sex marriage is wrong not in, not only just wrong it's sinful it's against the Word of God it's abhorrent to God and it should stop it must stop how much worse is that if they've gone so far that they allow uh, same-sex uh, marriages ceremonies happening in churches uh, I always question you know why why do you why does anybody any gay any lesbian any same-sex corrupt corrupted twisted brain want to have their wedding in the church in the first place why do you even want to go to the registry office and just get registered there why do you need to come to the church because they want to destroy the church because they want to water it down mock it and stamp all over it without the Christians saying anything why because it could offend somebody and it could be politically incorrect well I'm politically incorrect the Bible is politically totally incorrect and the Word of God is totally offensive if you're not offended you're not convicted if you're not convicted you won't ask for forgiveness of your sins you have to be offensive Jesus was offensive his mere existence was offensive and it is still offensive to this day and it will be until it comes back again forever he is offensive and we as children of God we as delegates of God on earth we have to be offensive we can't just be politically correct and be sweet Christian uh, with you know candies in our pockets to give away and say be good Christianity is not about just being good and doing good Christianity is about getting other people also saved and stopping people from sinning and going the wrong way you have the responsibility of your children your your, your family you, we have the promise of our family how do we have the promise of our family it's not a magic thing we have to teach them educate them it's not by magic because some people you know their children are wild and because they are Christian or they they've they, they been raised in a Christian family themselves they think our children we have the f promise of our families and all this is because of the teachings wrong teachings of some of the mega churches leaders of mega mega churches they teach you wrong or at least they don't tell you the whole thing they tell you they tell you some of the truth but not the whole truth you have the promise of your family but you also have a responsibility for that to achieve that sorry I'm my, my blood is boiling when I read about these things when I hear about these things when I talk about these things just I, I start steaming 
So I'm not gonna keep you long because I, I, I'm totally um, against these things, these acts, these laws, these bills, you know, and, and he's only talking on the surface to basically do this. It's not my fault. Washing his hands. Now, mate, you can wash your hands off of this, these filthy rules and laws. You have to be involved. You're right. You have to get involved in God and you have to get your people involved. If I don't speak out and you don't speak out and she doesn't speak out and he doesn't speak out, who's going to speak out? If I don't act and you don't act and he doesn't act and she doesn't act, who is going to act to change anything? The powers have put their foot down and they're pushing it for as far as they can go. This is not the end, this is the beginning for them. We need to stop them. You need to stop them. The reason they're there now and they have been successful in their plans and in their, in their agenda and their achieving of their agenda so far it's because of our silence it's because I haven't said anything in my workplace you haven't said anything in your workplace and your friends haven't said anything in their workplaces or your church members or ch church leaders haven't said anything in their circles about these things To be honest, I personally have done my part. I haven't worked a single place that people around me didn't know I'm a practicing Christian. And I'm a 24-7 Christian. I'm not, I'm not just a Sunday Christian. And I don't change, by the way. I'm not a different person in the church uh, and outside the church. I'm the same. I speak the same, talk the same, walk the same, do the same things. And uh, if I'm against and opposed to something in the church, I'll be the same in the workplace. Let me finish this session uh, with a prayer for our church leaders for the body of Christ and for our politicians again we need that more than anything in this world the world and um, corrupt leaders want a big war and all these things that you've been seeing in the past two or three years is the result or results of that that real real need of theirs because they need it they need that to survive they need that to continue I don't I, I like to say Democrats this and Republicans this because to me I think that is a thing of past uh, because now there is too much of each side and the other side infiltrated and it's it's not as easy as saying you know left against the right it's not like that anymore and and that again is part of the evil agenda that they uh, they've planned and devised they've been doing this for years they're experts the only thing we have on our side is God and the Word of God and we need a handful of zealous, passionate, God-loving Christians leading big churches, leading communities and uh, big circles around the world and we need some strong and outspoken Christians in the governments not just 
somebody who has been in a Christian family who gone to Catholic church or something, uh, uh, sorry, to a Catholic school or something like that, considering themselves Christian and being in the church, in the government. Uh, we have a few, maybe a handful of Christians in our government, in, in this country, and every time they speak, they get mocked and, you know, snuffed out easily. And, and it's not difficult for them to do that. But that is because they are not strong Christians to begin with. I don't, you know, I don't know their life and their lifestyle. I don't know if they're truly Christian. At least that's what they claim anyway. Let's get into intercession and praying for, for these things. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We ask you that you may forgive us and wash us with the blood of Jesus Christ. Forgive our sins and the sins of our fathers and our forefathers. Wash us with the blood of Jesus Christ. Have mercy on our land, on our country, on our nation. And raise your people, your children. Educate them, give them wisdom. Strengthen them. And give them courage and boldness. And rise them up to power, to the powers of authority and um, in the governments of the world. And give them courage to speak out against evil rulings, evil acts, evil bills, evil laws of any country. And stand firm against those things and put their feet down. To, to stand on the word of God and against those evil rulings. To be, a, to be an example for others to follow. Bring um, your holy people on earth to the leadership positions, leadership of churches and big churches and small churches to lead their congregation to stand firm on the ground and the basis and the principles of the Bible, the Word of God, and stand against all the evil acts and rulings of any government and not back down. Give them courage, give them all the means they need to stand against those things. Give the church members courage, boldness to follow through uh, and do what it takes to actually live a life worthy of Christ. Be like Christ in their own circles and be exemplary for people around them. Those who are Christian or those who are not Christians so they can look up to them and and be like them or want to be like them put an end to the evil O oh lord bring them down all the evil and evil rulers around the world who are trying to have the control of the world in their own hands bring them down Bring him down and bring him to justice. Let those in power expose them. Let those who are working alongside with them, those of their own kind maybe even, expose them. Let them expose each other, expose their own evils. Let them be exposed to the public and let everybody know about their evil. So it's no more a theory. But a fact. Give us wisdom. Give your people wisdom. And give wisdom to the world. People. People in the world 
and people in the church so they understand let more people come to God and let those who are already following you follow you more passionately and stand against all these evil rulings of the world leaders use us mightily in your kingdom to advance your kingdom and shrink shrink away Satan's kingdom in Jesus name we ask you all these things in your precious name in Jesus name amen and amen I hope to see you again soon till then God bless and goodbye